Great. Well, good afternoon again, John, and welcome back to everyone. We are about to finish off our session with some remarks and um, what an exciting day it has been with such rich insights and passion and such practical ideas uh, with a set of speakers from all sectors. I can really believe the great synergy and connectivity between talks as well. I'm excited to see the Center of Excellence and what will come of it as uh, Remy Massé envisioned and he helped us all envision it with him. We heard today of the morning sessions and your panel, John, about the role of innovation and change and the essential ingredients of authenticity and integrity. And if we really want to cultivate genuine equity, vibrancy and sustainability, we really want to underscore the importance of multi-sector collaboration as we've been hearing over these days. You also, I think in the panel spoke about the importance of um, longer term systems thinking, investing into the future well beyond uh, short term uh, partisanship and in building into this um, a culture that supports shared prosperity, community inclusion and resiliency. And then we, of course, we were, we were gifted with the message and the power of making rural places healing spaces, as uh, Shana described so eloquently. And Shana's artwork was moving, thought-provoking, and calling for greater understanding and deep listening. And as, as Alexander uh, reminded us, in rural settings, we seek to curate creativity and curiosity. Love those words. And the superb and practical illustrations of how we are doing this um, at uh, Les Jardins de Métis was very inspiring. And many enjoyed the breakout sessions on community collaboration, indigeneity and inclusion, infrastructure, um, agriculture and responses and resiliency. And I'm sorry, I didn't get to all of those sessions. There was so much good material today. So before I invite John to share a few remarks, I wanted to extend a very special, very big thank you to you, Dr. Kyle Rich. Kyle has been so generous in giving us his time and talent in organizing this conference, along with uh, co-host uh, Sadek. This would not have been possible without Kyle's tenacity and vision and leadership and passion for rural well-being and longevity. Kyle, you have provided us with masterful orchestration. There you were pulling everything together for this conference, for the planning for this year and last year, but also into May 2022. It will be intriguing to see what's in store for us in May. We cannot thank you enough, Kyle. You have been stellar in all of this. A big thanks. 
Um, so John, I'd be welcoming your thoughts as well. What were you seeing this morning? How are you feeling after these days? And a big thank you for you and your team for partnering with us on this. This has just been a dream team, really. Um, Sadek and the members there behind the curtain have really um, orchestrated with us uh, a profound and I think such meaningful connections here. So very much appreciating this partnership. Thank you, Kathleen. And, and what a pleasure it has been. Uh, we've had the privilege, uh, of course, of working with you. I've had the, the pleasure of being your co-host and, and working with SURF now for a period of time that is, is longer than we anticipated initially, uh, because we anticipated, of course, holding this conference in person at some point long ago, pre-pandemic, uh, when, when, uh, when, when things were still happening in person. And of course, um, the rules all changed on us and, uh, and, and we're quite uh, delighted uh, that uh, SURF continued uh, this important relationship with us. And again, it's just been uh, a real privilege to extend uh, this beyond uh, the original plan and, and to continue it into the future. So really appreciate that, Kathleen, and appreciate the opportunity to work with uh, SURF throughout. And of course, Kyle, I, I mean, we couldn't have done this without you. Uh, just remarkable. I think everyone would acknowledge throughout this that uh, you know, if, if research and education uh, ever turns out to be something you want to move away from, I think you have an incredible uh, potential career. You might want to get an agent uh, to, uh, to help you out with some of the facilitation. So thank you, uh, Kyle, really remarkable job. And, and I encourage you to stick with the research, but but you do do a good job at, uh, do a great job at facilitation. Um, I was, Kathleen, to get to your, your question, just inspired by by really everything today, the, the stories of innovation across the country really, um, in, in so many ways, I, I find those to really be a fuel that keeps us moving. Uh, they're they're, they're uh, so, so intriguing and uh, so wonderful to hear about those experiences from the many minds that we were able to assemble um, for this, uh, this event. Um, as I shared this morning, innovation is about doing economic uh, development differently. Um, it's about meeting the economic challenges of the 21st century in a creative and constructive manner. It's about taking advantage of opportunities so that we build our economies and make lives better. Um, we definitely had the opportunity to explore in more detail, detail the theme of our conference. That is to say this notion of building uh, bridges between the public, private, and civil society sectors, especially in, in rural communities. And I, I you know, I, I thought everyone did such a fantastic job presenting today that I'm, I'm reluctant to hone in on, on any ones precisely. But I will say, um, just starting with Rami Massé, who I thought uh, shared something quite, uh, quite intriguing when he said, through innovation, we will sustain and grow the economy. Um, Carl, Eric, and Lydia, who talked about the power of collaboration, um, and even if it's not done in formal ways, uh, just the power of collaboration, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. Alexander, who reminded us that the world is a competitive place, um, and, um, and we have to think for many reasons. Several months with more insights and information that will be helpful and enable new conversations and move the rural agenda in support of rural resilience and recovery forward. Um, and with this, Kathleen, now's a good time for us, I think, to, to talk a little bit about Ramuski and perhaps showcase it. Excellent. The Creating an Inclusive Economies Conference is about advancing rural Canada. It's about the opportunity for economic activity to occur in rural parts of the country, for social and economic well-being to be discussed, a place where good practices, best practices are to be shared, where evidence of good practices will be presented, and where stakeholders will come together to learn from one another and put into practice all of the learning that we've been able to benefit from over the years. 
this kind of an event where we're talking about bringing in the public, private and nonprofit sector to discuss rural issues, you know, propose policy, work on solutions is, is really key because I think the way forward and the way to address these issues are going to be through collaboration between all these sectors. Please join us on May 25th to May 27th, 2022 in Ramouski for the Creating Inclusive Economies Conference. It seems, John, both you and uh, Kyle could go into radio, television, whatever other field you want, with great voices and great work there in that video. It's very um, attractive design and appealing um, setting. I look very much forward to having the opportunity to see folks gather in that area. Uh, folks will be receiving follow-up communication on this conference, um, and uh, we urge everyone really to stay in touch. We have the platform until Saturday, and people can stay connected. And keep an eye out for registering in the weeks ahead. I think, John, we have the team ready and set to go when um, we have more information about the results of this conference. Indeed. Uh, and thank you. That, that is correct. Uh, and of course, um, it, it is uh, not far away, uh, spring to 2022. Uh, we will, though, as well, uh, continue. And I think the experience over the past couple of days has demonstrated the, the possibilities. We will have a virtual component of this as well for those that wouldn't be able to attend in purpose uh, in an effort to uh, make sure it's as inclusive as possible and as accessible as possible. Um, so look forward to that as well. Before we leave you, please bookmark the conference website URL uh, in your favorites for everything you need to know. As, uh, as Kathleen suggested, we're going to continue to communicate through this. Once more, on behalf of Kathleen and I, we could not have done this without the support of TELUS and the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, SHRC, as, as many of you know them. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, one final note, uh, an important note, uh, we are also committed to reconciliation and ensuring the tragic history and ongoing legacy of residential schools is never forgotten. This is an important week, of course. We invite you to join us tomorrow to recognize in your own way and commemorate the legacy of residential schools. Now, Kyle, with that, um, over to you. Thank you very much. And, and thank you both for those kind words. Um, there was certainly a whole team of us uh, coming together to pull this off. And I just got the uh, cushy job of getting to stand in front of the camera and, and talk to all these great people for the last two days. So thank you also for that opportunity. Um, I just have a few kind of closing notes. First is thank you to, um, to you, Kathleen and John, uh, for co-hosting this today and co-hosting the event. Um, it's been a pleasure to be here and see all of this great content. I also want to thank everyone who's joined us today um, and yesterday over the last two days. Uh, last word was that we had um, 196 people who registered. So um, we connected with 196 people in one way or another. We had that many folks registered. Um, so that's fantastic. That's really exciting to see that many people who are connected with us and, and joining and hopefully learning and taking something away from this. A few final reminders, as we've kind of said already, um, we do have this platform and it will stay open until Saturday. So please go in, send your chats, set up some meetings, connect with the, uh, the folks that are uh, part of the system and who are engaged here, um, and definitely stay connected so we can share some more of that um, information with you about the next steps of these events and the exciting stuff that we'll be doing over the next year. I also just want to reiterate what you said, John, and, and thank uh, the key kind of people who made this come together. So in particular, all the folks at Surf and SEDEC who supported this throughout the way, um, as well as TELUS, our uh, presenting sponsor, and the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council for their support of this as well. And so with that, I guess I have the exciting job of um, saying thank you and closing the conference. So thanks again to everyone for joining us. Um, keep your eyes peeled for information. We hope to see you all in May of 2022 um, in Ramouski, in real time, <laughs> in person. Um, really looking forward to those field trips. Um, and I would also invite everyone to join uh, the SURF 
AGM, which will be happening at 4.30. So you have a few minutes to stretch, uh, to uh, grab a drink if you need to. And then we will meet at 4.30 that you will have a link in the system to join um, this meeting. So you'll have to click the link. You'll be able to go there. Um, and then in true surf form, we will be having some social time after the AGM. So please join us then. And then as soon as the AGM is wrapped up, we'll have a time to connect and chat a little more um, informally outside of the, uh, the conference space. So thank you again, everyone. It's been a fantastic couple of days. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you all again in the future. If